Hello all, this is Adventure, and today we've got a different kind of video. For those of you who are out of the loop, in the time I took a hiatus away from the channel, I spent that time playing Guilty Gear Strive competitively. And not to brag, but I think I did and am doing pretty well. I main Jacko, and many people would consider me to be the best Jacko here in the United States, and some people will tell you that I may very well be best in the world. So, with my newfound expertise in the character, it's only natural people would ask me to make a guide. And it's taken a while, but I've finally put together something that I think should help any aspiring Jacko player to really get into the mindset it takes to understand this very complicated character. Well, first a small disclaimer. I wanted to mention that this guide assumes you have at least a little bit of background knowledge on Guilty Gear Strive's base mechanics and are at least a little bit familiar with Jacko herself, so if you are brand new to the game, I'd recommend you check out Jacko's Dust Loop page and familiarize yourself with her core toolkit before continuing on. This guide is targeted at players who have a little bit of gameplay experience already and are looking to take their play to the next level. With that out of the way, let's actually get into the guide. First of all, what kind of character even is Jacko? Well, Jacko is a set-play-oriented character who relies heavily on the help of her servants to succeed in winning games. The servants themselves are extremely versatile, being cornerstones of Jacko's offense, neutral, zoning, and even defense in some cases. Because of this, Jacko sees a very broad differentiation of playstyles between players, and it's hard to call one style stronger than the other. I'm going to try to address multiple ways of approaching situations throughout the course of this video, but know that my personal bias as someone who plays the character will likely shine through, and this video will reflect the way I play the character a bit closer than a definite textbook guide. Anyways, Jacko uses her servants to define her play at any range, being extremely potent and dangerous zoning tools at long range, solid mid-range attack extensions in neutral, and excruciatingly tough pressure starters on offense. Generally speaking, like every other character in the game, it's Jacko's goal to get in on the opponent and get her pressure started. However, it's a bit more unorthodox for Jacko than for the rest of the cast thanks to her reliance on these little guys. Jacko needs minions on the field to pose a significant threat, but it's not as easy as it seems to get there. One of Jacko's toughest puzzles to solve is how exactly to get the ball rolling. She starts without any minions on the field, and they take substantial setup time in order to place, time in which the opponent can run up and hit Jacko, or just kill the minion and then move forward on their way. Because of this, Jacko needs to be careful when and where she decides to set her minions at any given time. Thanks to the 1.18 patch, Jacko now has solid round start options in 2k, 2d, far slash, and 5h that can net her high reward on normal or counter hit and snag a knockdown in order for her to start setting minions up. However, round start is RPS, and there's nothing you can do about that. And with Jacko's place as being one of the lowest health characters in the game, with one of the worst reversal supers in the game, losing round start can be tough for her. In some matchups, I find it's better not to initiate it in round start RPS and instead just walk backwards and wait to see what the opponent does. Jacko's 2D and 5H can be excellent whiff punish tools if the opponent presses something at round start, and if they don't, backing away gives Jacko a bit of space to potentially set a minion. Notable matchups I tend to stay away from round start RPS would be Soul, Kai, Mei, and Zato. After escaping round start, assuming neither of you have been hit, the first thing you want to be thinking about is how to get your servants out. Like I mentioned, Jacko's large variety of playstyles and high variability from matchup to matchup leads to considerable differentiation on how to achieve this goal, but let's go down a few different ways Jacko can gain the initial ground she needs to set at least one minion safely. Most obviously would be landing a hit. Pretty much any button she lands can convert into at least a soft knockdown, which gives her time to cancel into minion pull and then toss to set a minion up on the opponent's wake up. If you feel like playing defensive, JD is an incredible tool for gaining her the time she needs to pull a minion as ground blocking it usually means Jacko is plus, and its incredible angle makes it really hard to get around. However, this is a risky tool as it has counter hit recovery, so in matchups where the opponent can travel long distances very quickly or hit you out of JD with long range buttons, or both, you will want to be very careful with this button. After the opponent does block a JD, oftentimes you're not home free just yet. Like I said, setting and moving a minion takes a lot of time. In order to place a minion and hit it with Jacko's fastest button, 2P, it takes a total of 30 frames to hit the minion, then 9 frames of recovery afterwards, so a total of 39 frames where Jacko is vulnerable. Because of this, it's important to gauge the situation and adapt as necessary to your opponent's options as best you can. Jacko can use these plus frames to force the opponent to block a normal, catch a backdash, or throw the opponent, which will be explained in a minute. Oftentimes, you'll want to pull a minion and hold onto it for the faster recovery, and then reposition as necessary. Jacko's safest space to set minions is in the air, as she can jump cancel after hitting one, heavily reducing the recovery of whatever move she used to get it into motion. Jump, Minion Drop, JS is an extremely safe and versatile tool to getting a minion on screen thanks to its incredible angle, difficulty to punish, and the freedom it leaves Jacko after the fact. She can double jump, air dash, and even air stall by using 214k to bait out the opponent's anti-air. Of course, you can't be too predictable with your options here, and your opponent can snag you out of the air if they're quick, but it usually has to be on prediction, not reaction. 
Another option is to run away and let go of the minion once you think it's safe. You can also quickly set the minion at any of these points and use shield command to parry the opponent's attack. The intention here is to get a minion out on the field safely, not necessarily hit the opponent, so you don't have to take huge risks to try to get a knockdown, but be aware that blocking any button makes Jacko's minions disappear from the screen, so try to avoid that if possible. Generally, your safest option in this scenario will be to force the opponent to block an attack, as this gives you another window to do the same thing, but with a bit more wiggle room when it comes to frame advantage. So, you made the opponent block a stray button in neutral. Now what? Thanks to Jacko's fast and long-reaching kick normal, she can usually get herself into a situation where the opponent has to block out a Gatlin, be it from far slash to 5H or 2K to 2D. In this situation, you have a few key things to be thinking about. 1. Stagger Pressure Jacko can threaten resets during her block strings with a snappy minion set or pull into running away, so the opponent can often be tempted to mash on her Gatling strings. It's oftentimes worth it to delay your next Gatling in the chain by a bit to scare the opponent away from pressing, which in turn allows you an opening to set a minion on their block, which in turn makes them want to mash more on your Gatlings, so on and so forth. Jacko can do this off any button thanks to her 236k, a kicking attack that always frame traps the opponent if timed correctly. Most commonly, the opponent will find themselves guessing between either a 2-6k to frame trap their mash attack, or you setting a minion and continuing your pressure now with the added threat of said minion. Of the two, 2-6k is the safer option, because even after it's blocked correctly, the opponent still has to respect one more setup attempt. If you cancel into a minion pull and hold it, Jacko can run away after a 2-6k, which actually leaves her with a little bit of plus frames to boot. One problem. While Jacko is holding said servant, she cannot block or attack and it takes 12 frames, all counter hit state, to set the minion back down. Because of this, after a 236k is blocked, Jacko enforces probably the silliest looking RPS situation in the entire game. Booking it, jumping, or booking it a little bit, and then jumping. Now, it's important to keep in mind that some characters can deal with one or more of these options better than the others. Characters like Chip or Melia can deal with booking it very well, characters like Zato or Gold Lewis can deal with jumping very well, and some characters like Ram, Kai, or Mei can deal with all of them very well. In the situation you don't want to engage in this RPS, cancelling a Dominion Recall leaves you safe enough to block the opponent's incoming attack, which isn't ideal, but better than getting counter hit into 60% and losing the entire game. If you're feeling extra feisty, you can try to steal your turn back by setting a minion and instantly parrying. But be warned, this is not a foolproof strategy, and a savvy opponent will catch on and start counter hitting you before you can do so. Now, say you happen to be fighting an anonymous character who I shall not name, that not only has some of the fastest mobility in the game, but some of the longest reaching normals in the game that threaten game losing conversions on successful counter hit. How are you supposed to set up then? Well, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you don't. Jacko's problem matchups usually have to do with the inability to set up minions safely, and if you can't set minions safely, that means you'll have to learn to play without them to some extent. Luckily, Jacko isn't all that terrible in neutral without the help of her little friends. Jacko's 5k, 2k, and far slash all surface extremely potent low-risk neutral pokes that convert into knockdowns for her to get the ball rolling. Depending on the matchup, you'll want to switch up which of these buttons you'll be using, but usually 5 and 2k are safer and better buttons than far slash. 5H and 2D are incredibly strong with punish tools, as well as buttons used for catching backdashes, but you don't want to be caught dead with these buttons. 2D's low profile can be used to some extent in certain matchups, but once again, be wary of its extremely high whiff recovery on top of the fact that its low profile is kind of janky in regards to what moves it does and doesn't low profile. 5H is the real kicker of a button. It goes farther faster, has less whiff recovery, and even has a tiny disjoint meaning if it's spaced perfectly, it can clash with 6Ps, which you can then use to knock the opponent down with a clash cancel into 2D or similar button. Again, both of these buttons are easily whiff punishable, so it's important not to press them in situations where you are unsure if they will end up hitting or not. Smart use of 5H in conjunction with Jacko's other pokes gives her a threatening neutral, but use of it alone makes her easy to space out and counter poke effectively. Another approach you can take is waiting for whiff punish opportunities and instead setting a minion. Even if you react late, it's going to be near impossible for the opponent to punish you for doing so, and if they do press, you can quickly parry to put them in a threatening situation where you can either take the time to set up more, or run up to begin offense with your minion. Now that we've talked about how to get the screen set up, let's talk about what to do when the screen is set up. A very common question I have asked on stream, twitch.tv slash adventure with a 3, is as follows. When I get minions out, I don't know how to use them, and the opponent ends up just getting in, or killing them before I get a chance to start my offense. This is a fairly common problem among Jacko players, and while I can't tell you exactly what part of your game plan you need to improve to make minion neutral scarier, I can give you insight into what I'm thinking about when minions are in play. The first and most important thing I'd tell you is that it is imperative to keep track of your minions and how they help you. 
know where your minions are all of the time, and know what parts of the screen they can test. If you know where the enemy is in range of a minion attack, you can work on setting up the rest of the screen so that nowhere is safe, and you can cover the holes in your setups with Jacko's own presence, forcing the opponent to either go directly at a minion or directly at you. You might think playing passive like this could end up being countered by an opponent slowly approaching by killing all the minions, but you would be wrong. Thanks to the extended hit stop that comes from hitting a minion, Jacko can punish opponents trying to get in this way by running in and hitting a button as well. Of course, like with any game plan, if it starts to become too predictable or autopilot, the opponent will find holes, so you also have to make sure you sprinkle in a little bit of active pressure as well. I'm talking setting more minions up, setting up JD, moving the minions with buttons, etc. Anything to keep your opponent on their toes and make them hesitate on their approach angle is enough to let Jacko's neutral wall set up really shine. If you're playing a matchup against a slower character who has to respect your minions being set up in neutral, a common roadblock you can run into is how to deal with a character that is good at killing the minions safely. Characters like Soul, Gold Lewis, Axel, or Anji may not have the greatest options to get past minions, but they do have solid options to kill them as you send them. In this scenario, there are a few things you'll want to do. First and easiest is to try to parry their buttons. If you chuck a minion directly at them and parry right before they press their button, the minion can parry their attempted kill, netting you some time to chuck another minion over there and run up for some pressure. It's important to try to be early rather than late on this, as if the enemy ends up whiffing on the parry, they still have to deal with the minion you already have out, instead of having it killed and you just whiffing the command. In fact, against some characters whose buttons can't be reasonably parried from a distance, it's good to stop your minion's trajectory by whiffing a parry in order to force the opponent to have to deal with the minion in some other way. If the opponent blocks your minion from a distance, they have to participate in a little bit of RPS. After a minion is blocked, you can command it to do attack command, of course, but the reason you'll want to do this is so that you have the plus frames that you can use to approach on the opponent. However, the plus frames you get aren't enough to gain any significant space without the opponent being able to kill the minion in between your running, so you need to be able to frame trap the opponent to stop them from doing so. How do you do this? Another attack command. If you input an attack command after the opponent blocks an attack command, it will frame trap them and hit them out of whatever option they use to escape. However, if you frame trap every time, you won't gain enough space to make it in on an opponent, so you need to rotate from frame trapping to running in, forcing the opponent to guess if they are going to need to mash or jump away, or block it out in order to stop you from making it in. Against a mashy opponent, you can also use parry to really dissuade them from mashing as it restores your meter on successful connect and gives you the time to run in without using any more of your bar, but it lets the opponent escape if they do anything but mash, so it's a higher risk, higher reward option in these long range minion pressure scenarios. Once you get into a certain range from your opponent, you can use the extended active frames from hitting a minion against them by with punishing them with your 2D or 5H, which leaves their only real escape option as jump or backdash, both of which can be covered if you take a little extra time to set up a minion, or go directly punish them with an air-to-air -air or backdash punish. A lot of figuring out how to make it in this scenario is to figure out your opponent's tendencies, such as do they like to mash after the first clap or the second, or do they try to fuzzy jump out in between claps, etc. So now we begin the offense portion of the guide, and oh boy is this a doozy. Jacko's pressure routing varies wildly depending on screen positioning, number of minions on the field, how much time they have left on the field, how much minion gauge you have, how much tension you have, eh, you get the idea. As we all know, we're playing Guilty Gear Strive, and in Guilty Gear Strive, almost every character pressures to some degree with delayed gatlings in what is known as stagger pressure, which I explained earlier in the video. The gist of it is you delay your Gatling options to catch opponents trying to mash out of them, and then once they respect the delays, restart your Gatling strings from the top or go for a throw or unique mix-up option. For Jacko, this is no different, but with the use of minions she can expand the stagger pressure to be a lot more scary. For one, instead of just resetting her string, Jacko can instead quickly set a minion then press a fast button, which puts far more pressure on the opponent now that you have a minion out. And once you do have a minion out, her pressure is greatly enhanced due to the fact that minions give her access to a great evil. Plus frames. Pressuring with a minion gives her access to a number of different ways to gain lots of plus frames, which can all be used to reset her block string, enforce a strike through a mix-up, start stagger pressure over again, and increase corner carry, all in one. The main ways to gain plus frames with minions are to use 2-1-4-K, or to hit the opponent and the opponent's guard with one attack, but there is a third, more complicated option we'll get into later. The simplest is 2-1-4-K. Basically, when you use 2 on 4K, you trade a bit of your gray meter to leave yourself a plus 15. This is extremely powerful, but of course requires the meter to use it and the minion to be close enough to hit the opponent with the attack. The second is hitting the minion. You see, when you hit a minion and the opponent, the minion resets the blocks done from your button and changes the frame data of said button. It varies wildly from button to button how effective this is, so here's a chart to show you how much plus frames each button gives you. Mostly, you're going to want to use 2P, as it gives you the most plus frames and is also your fastest button, which is a win-win for Jacko. 
Additionally, the minions can allow for enhanced combo routes in these situations, so be on the lookout for unique hit confirms when pressuring like this. The upside is of course plus frames, but also hitting the minion doesn't use any of Jacko's minion gauge, which is important since using any of her gauge puts a temporary timer stopping it from regenerating for about a second after using the command. However, hitting the minion reduces the amount of time it will stay on the field a lot more than using attack command, so it's important to keep in mind whether you want more meter or more minion uptime when planning your block strengths. It's also worth bringing up that the second option of hitting a minion and the opponent's guard can interact in unique and interesting ways depending on when and where this interaction takes place. If the minion is spaced far from the opponent but you hit both of them anyways, you can end up generating more plus frames than you would otherwise. This lets you set up things like a plus on block 5D, which I will talk about later, but this pressure string involving 5H is also a lesser known very practical usage of this interaction. If you hit a minion with the back hit of your 5H while the enemy blocks it as well, you can cancel into a minion pull and then set a fresh minion, then continue your string while being plus as well. This enhances corner carry, the amount of time you can continue a block string, and has significant openings for you to try to sneak in a mix-up as well. Now, I mentioned there was a third option for generating plus frames that was a bit more niche, and that option is exclusive to Jacko's Sandwich Pressure. As you probably already know, Sandwich Pressure is the most ideal pressure scenario for Jacko for a number of reasons, including better converts off of successful hit, extended duration of the pressure due to the minion pushing the opponent back towards Jacko instead of away from her, and scarier strike throw, since Jacko will be closer to the opponent after the plus frames. But there's actually another reason that makes Sandwich Pressure significantly scarier than regular minion pressure, and that is the effects of hitting a minion in the opponent's guard, but having the minion not connect with their guard. If the minion whiffs, the block stun is never reset, but Jacko gets some extra plus frames anyways, which takes some normals from minus to extremely plus, and also deals significantly less pushback to the opponent, letting Jacko enforce a very scary strike throw off of this circumstance. Most threatening would have to be after a close slash, as after this is blocked, Jacko is left at plus 10, and she's already in range for a throw, meaning she doesn't have to run forward at all to take throw the opponent here. This is the added benefit of pushing the minion back farther away so that Jacko can carry the opponent further without the minion crossing sides and ending the sandwich pressure. If you're looking to open the opponent up during these pressure strings, it's important to keep in mind the risk-reward of Jacko's mix-up options and how each one changes depending on the minions she has on field. Throw always stays consistent. You're risking whipping throw and eating a big counter hit in exchange for some damage and a hard knockdown. Jacko's post-throw state is quite strong, however, as she gets access to unique mix-ups and sandwich pressure off of it, but we'll go further into Jacko's vortex options later on. Outside of Throw and Jacko's unique setups for Vortex, all she has left is 5D, which can get kind of interesting. You see, 5D is punishable on block, just like for every other character. However, all of this changes if there's a minion in play. Jacko's Tap Dust will almost always be safe on block if she has a minion to cover her, and will usually net a soft knockdown on hit in the same situation. 5D will be zero on block if the minion whiffs behind the opponent during sandwich pressure and at very specific spacings when the minion is in front of the opponent, it can even be plus on block. This requires a very good eye to space and some specific setups, but it's near guaranteed to catch your opponent off guard. Even better is the fact that on hit, this specific spacing allows for 5D to be comboed after on hit, which gives Jacko more wiggle room to set up after the combo, and of course extra damage from the mix-up as well. While this can be set up mid-screen, it's easiest to do this in the corner. My most practical plus on block 5D setup is after a corner safe jump where you simply do 2k 2d clap, 2k 5d. The 5d will be spaced to be plus naturally after this setup. This leads me into our next topic, being Oki's MA and advanced mix-up options. You see, after knockdowns, Jacko gets some extra time to set up her minions, and a lot of the time, this extra time lets her reasonably set up new mix-up routes or stronger screen positioning that she won't be able to have without said knockdown. The easiest and most simple benefit Jacko can get from a knockdown is guaranteed sandwich pressure. Simply throw the minion behind the opponent while they're getting up, and bam, you have them in sandwich pressure. While in many cases, such as off of juggled scaled close slash 2H or a minion clap ender, this is your optimal set play, on a bigger knockdown Jacko can gain benefit of sandwich pressure as well as a unique mix-up option dependent on said knockdown. After a throw, Jacko can enforce an unreactable left-right mix-up by setting up a minion then air dashing over, and either using minion clap to hit left side or JH to hit right. This nets Jacko a combo on hit and lets her set up pressure afterwards as well, and even if it is blocked, Jacko is now in sandwich pressure, so going for this mix-up is a win-win. The only weakness to this setup is that it forces a cross-up, which you might not want to do if the opponent is near the corner. As for invincible reversals, it can cross up the input and make them not come out for Sol and Kai, and if Leo tries to flash kick on this setup, the same side mix-up is 100% safe to his DP, but the JH is not, so keep that in mind when fighting him. After a sweep that hits close, Jacko gets access to a 4-way mix-up that's even scarier than the throw one. Just pull a minion, jump forward, and drop the minion at the apex of your jump, and the mix-up is now in play. 
you now have four options to mix the opponent up. One, you can backwards air dash over their head and hit JS for an overhead on the left. Two, you can backwards air dash against their push box and press JS for an overhead on the right. Three, you can just drop down and press 2K2D for a low on the right. And four, you can just drop down and throw for, well, a throw. The first and second mix-up options are safe jumps, which is great to keep in mind. Of course, after a hit, Jacko can go into a combo and set up again, but after a close slash 2H near the corner or with low juggle scaling, she can route into another mix-up option, this one being a fuzzy overhead or F Shiki. Simply run a short distance, throw the minion, time a JS so that it hits the opponent close to the ground, then cancel it into a double jump P, then cancel that into a minion clap. While it looks like the opponent is standing up, the game is still forcing block stun and thus keeps them standing even if the opponent has returned to down backing, letting you hit them with a JP rising overhead on their standing hurtbox even if they decide to try to crouch. This mix-up is easily Jacko's hardest to execute, and requires solid knowledge of when you can set it up, and the execution prowess to actually land it. Of course, the instant overhead is very scary, but make sure you complement it with the low so it doesn't become too predictable. In the corner, Jacko's Oki's MA is usually the easiest. She has two main things she can do, a corner safe jump slash 50-50, and a raw setup for two minions. The safe jump simply involves Jacko pulling a minion, jumping forward, throwing it, and falling back down. This way the minion does the Oki for you while you can block a reversal attempt, then continue your pressure after you've confirmed the opponent is blocking your minion. If your opponent doesn't have a reversal, this can still be worth going for since you can backwards air dash JS near the end of your jump arc for a delayed overhead, or just fall all the way down in 2k2d for a low. The weakness of this mix-up option is that oftentimes it will force a wall break, so if you want to keep your corner pressure, instead set a minion, hit it with close slash in timing with your opponent's wake-up animation beginning, then pull and set another minion. This can be a reversal safe against slower reversals, but faster ones can clip you out of it, so be careful. The strength of this setup is that it instantly lets Jacko start corner pressure with two minions, and allows her to convert into her scariest block strings and offensive options without risking a wall break or having the minions time out. Speaking of Jacko's scariest pressure, what is it that makes her corner pressure so scary? The main thing is that it lets her continually loop minion setups while building meter, and then lets her cash out into cheer H pressure, which is an infinite block string with tons of chip and lots of risk build. The main pressure string Jacko uses to build meter in the corner is eloquently named PP, after the inventor of the tech, not Pichu. The string is executed as follows, 2-6k a minion and the opponent's guard, then pull another minion, 2-6k the first minion again, throw the minion in your hands, run up close slash, 2h, kick the new minion, and start from the beginning with the new minion. Here it is in motion. As you can see, this builds a lot of meter very quickly and goes on seemingly forever. Of course, this is not without its flaws. There's a significantly large gap both between the two 2-3-6-Ks and the throw in running up close slash 2-H, but the idea of the pressure isn't that it's an uncontestable block string, it's that mashing here is very undesirable for the opponent. On any of these gaps, Jacko can frame trap the opponent and still remain plus while also keeping the minions alive to restart the pressure should she get the meter to start it again. After the first 2-3-6-K, you can simply attack command to hit anyone mashing, and after throwing the minion, you can 2-K-2-D or forego the throw and attack command to stop an attempted mash there as well. Both of these keep Jacko's offense going and dish out large punishment for anyone who tried to escape, meaning there really is no trick to escaping this offense, which is what makes it so strong. It's also worth noting that at any point during this string or during the frame traps, Jacko can just stop and enforce a plus on block 5D, throw, or instant overhead depending on the meter she has remaining, which all helps add to make this an extremely threatening block string in the corner. The final and most important part of Jacko's corner pressure is cheer pressure. After gaining 50 bar, Jacko can start a genuinely uncontestable true block string that either steals a lot of the opponent's meter, or chips away at their life bar and builds risk. To do this, you do first need to be able to activate it. To go into Cheer H, you want to cancel on the first possible frame of contact with either her 236k or 2h. 236k is harder to see coming since she uses it in her main block string, while 2h is easier to make gapless. Both of these need to hit the opponent and the minion, then get cancelled into Cheer as early as possible. After this happens, press 2k or 2p for a true block string. Force plus frames with an attack command and run in range to start the pressure. The main string is simply close slash 236k clap, close slash 236k clap, but this can be FD'd out, so if you start getting pushed outside of close slash range, do 5k 2d clap until you're able to make it back in. If done right, all of this should be an inescapable block string for the entire duration of the buff, after which you can enforce a mix up or just go back into pp and build enough meter to do it again. This is easily Jacko's scariest and strongest use for meter, which is why you want to avoid breaking the wall as her if at all possible. Jacko has the same problem as Melia, where even after a hard wall break with super, she doesn't have the time she needs to set up her offense, so Jacko wants to be able to react to hitting the opponent with intentionally dropping her combo before the wall stick, then setting back up again, unless you have a really good reason for wanting that wall to break. On the topic of meter, how does Jacko use it? Well, as shown before, her best use is for cheer pressure. 
However, you're not always going to be pressuring in the corner, so what do you spend it on other than that? For one, she can use FED as a high damage reversal option, but since it's a grab, it's inconsistent and loses to any airborne attack. This does high damage, but has massive scaling, so you'll only want to route into it if you need the hard knockdown to set back up, or your opponent had a bit of risk on them to force the move to hit without any scaling. Gekko also has one more super, Cheer S. This armors all minions and makes them completely invincible for a period of time, and removes the drawback of them disappearing if Jacko gets hit or blocks. This super can be incredibly useful for closing out rounds when you're locked in a neutral scenario, as it turns minions from scary to contest to 100% uncontestable, but it has its weaknesses. The activation time is long, so opponents can gain space and escape the minion you were hoping to threaten them with by simply running during your cheer activation. For this reason, you want to set up cheer S when you either have lots of space or are plus in some sort of way. Cheer S can also run into the problem of getting minions stuck in bad places and not letting you pull another. Since they can't die, they don't time out and interrupt the natural flow of her zoning. Because of this, each armored minion's position needs to be carefully considered before setting it on its path, as if it gets avoided, it's useless for the entire rest of the super. The benefit of this super is if they are all in good spots, it almost guarantees Jacko will win neutral, and forces your opponent to give her a lot more respect than they would otherwise. It also lets Jacko disrespect her opponent easier because minions no longer disappear when she's hit, which affects the startup of Clap in a unique way. If you look at the wiki, Attack Command is listed as having 3 plus 9 frames of startup. The reason for the division is that Jacko takes 3 frames to start the command, and it takes 9 frames for the minion to then perform the attack. This usually doesn't matter because if Jacko gets hit during the 9 frames of the minion's startup, the minion will die and not do the attack. But with Cheer S up, if Jacko gets past her 3 frames of startup, then gets hit, the minion still does the attack, and saves her from the opponent's punish. This can save Jacko's ass in a dangerous scenario, and effectively gives her a 3 frame normal that is plus 15 on block and comboable on hit, which is certainly nothing to scoff at. Jacko's supers certainly are quite strong, but the way she uses Roman Kansas is a bit more unique. Jacko can use Red RC to guarantee a minion setup after a high block stun normal is blocked, but be careful in the corner because you can be thrown out of it if you're close enough. It's also worth noting that when Roman cancelling to set a minion on block, you should always use Fast RC, as it uses less meter and gives the opponents less time to react with a throw. On hit, Jacko's Red RC extensions are pretty poor, all things considered. She doesn't get much damage off her RC combos, so mostly use this if you really need the extra damage to close out a round, you want the corner carry, or if Roman cancelling will let you build enough bar to set a minion after the combo when otherwise you couldn't have. Jacko has strong momentum shifting normals, and she can use PRC and neutral to effectively double the range of these moves, which lets her pose more of a threat than she would otherwise. You can go for a risky 2D in neutral, and if it whiffs or gets backdashed, you can PRC fast cancel into another 2D to hit the opponent out of said backdash or button they press to whip punish you. As for BRC, Jacko has a couple neat combos that use it, but nothing super special. Jacko uses YRC the same as anybody else, to interrupt block strings, but her post YRC state is fairly scary for both her and the opponent as it puts her into her stagger pressure, but also doing said stagger pressure can risk a big counter hit if you try to get set up. So we've talked about how Jacko can use meter, but how can Jacko respond to meter use from the opponent? Jacko's pressure can be frame tight and build lots of risk, so she encourages the use of defensive options against her. One of her bigger weaknesses is she has no naturally YRC safe routes, and her burst safe routes are practically non-existent. On top of that, getting bursted or YRC'd even on block removes all minions from the field. So even if Jacko blocks a gold burst, she is spaced too far out to get a punish, the blocked burst ends up leaving the opponent in a stronger state than they would have been otherwise. Now, this might sound like an ass-backwards way of thinking about things, but my philosophy for dealing with meter is such that because Jacko is so weak to meter defensive options, you shouldn't try to bait them. As I said, Jacko loses her minions regardless of if the opponent's defensive option is blocked or not, so sometimes successfully baiting a defensive option can leave Jacko in a disadvantageous position anyways, and getting hit by a defensive option isn't too much different. This may be different if Jacko had solid routes to bait YRC and burst while keeping her pressure going, but she pretty much has to hard bait every single defensive option by stopping her pressure, so effectively you are risking the opponent mashing out and escaping your pressure while keeping the meter for stronger offensive uses, and your reward is a low damage minionless punish or some minionless stagger pressure. Because of this, I think it's best to just play as you always do, and then when you do get YRC to burst it on, take solace in knowing that that's 50 meter down for the opponent, or their burst gone, and try to block out whatever it is they're doing before they get the meter back again. When it comes to invincible damaging reversals such as DPs or reversal supers, things get a bit more interesting. While Jacko doesn't have the tools to bait defensive options like YRC or burst, she does have the tools to bait DPs. Jacko can utilize very basic DP safe Oki simply by throwing a minion to the opponent and having it perform the midi while she stands out of range for the DP, but Jacko also has a few safe jumps she can utilize as well. 
We've already talked about the corner safe jumps, but at mid-screen, Jacko can usually end a combo in the first hit of 6-H, pull a minion, dash jump, throw minion JS for a safe jump that allows her to block the opponent's reversal and set up sandwich pressure. After a mid-screen forever Elysium driver, Jacko can safe jump by pulling a minion, jumping, then doing a slightly delayed air dash, letting go of the minion, and falling with JP. If you can't access a safe jump, simply let the minion do Oki for you and distance yourself away from the opponent's DP. This works more on some reversals than others, but it's the best option you have outside of a safe jump, and Jacko doesn't have too many great safe jump setups in the first place. During pressure, you may need to limit your Gatling options and make it more frame tight, but if the opponent gets happy with DPs in your gaps, it's the perfect time to start utilizing your plus frames to go for throws, since DPs aren't throwing full. Metered reversals have to be respected, which puts a damper on Jacko's offense, but if you start a true block string and keep it going, the opponent will likely feel the inclination to YRC, which as I said before, is really a net positive for you since you no longer have to deal with the threat of their reversal while you pressure them. And to be quite frank, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to discuss about general Jacko gameplay. For a refresher, Jacko is a set play oriented character who needs to use her minions to apply her most dangerous offense, defense, and neutral. And the best way to improve is her is to familiarize yourself with the scenarios you can create with them and utilizing those to their greatest effect. But the most important takeaway in this guide is undoubtedly that everything I said isn't textbook and you shouldn't listen to any of my advice. Exclusively. As I said in the beginning of the video, Jacko is a very unique character with a broad differentiation in how she can be played, so the most important thing for you to do as a Jacko player is to experiment. Learn new and interesting setups, try different patterns in neutral, talk to your fellow Jacko players about ideas you have, and try to develop your own playstyle. Of course information I gave you here can help you build as a player, but if you try to carbon copy every little thing I tell you in this guide, you're going to end up as an imitation of my play. You need to be able to learn and grow by applying my advice in your own unique way not by replicating everything I say and do down to the point you don't have anything to call your own. So please, learn from this advice in the video. Don't copy straight from me. You may have noticed that in the video title, the video says part one. That is because I am going to be releasing a second video going more in depth in Jacko's matchups later on. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, this is everything I wanted to let you guys know. With that out of the way, this has been Adventure, and I wish you the best of luck learning Jacko. Peace.